Welcome to the Miller Sheets Gallery in the 2014 exhibit Mid-Century Modern, Retro, Cool, and Classic. This is a wonderful exhibit. It brings back nostalgia for adults of today. It was a wonderful period, of some of the best period of our history. We start uh, post-war, after World War II, uh, 1945, and run until 1969 when we landed a man on the moon. Behind me is a dedication I do each year to my father, uh, Miller Sheets, so the gallery is named after him. This is uh, my eighth year following in his footsteps, not trying to fill them, just follow them. It was World War II, it was the Depression, it was very difficult, but now, now the war was over. Now, everybody in the world looked to the United States to rebuild. Now, all these new companies started forming because we, the United States, helped rebuild the world. So you had money, you had a job, you had excitement, you had adventure, you had optimism. You could do anything. I mean, we're at the top of the world. Everybody respected us. I want a new home. I'm tired of living in this little dingy old apartment. And so, if the home could speak, you would say, you know, you want to build a home like mine. Classy, stylish, lots of light coming in, lots of new ideas about color. And the inside of these homes, oh, as you can see, everyone was different on the outside. We made them personal, we made them individual, and they weren't expensive because of all the new materials. The inside of these homes, oh, you want class and style and fun? Hey, this was the baby boomers. I was one of them. Huh, I was. Born in 1948, and I had a whole new kind of house around me. All right, imagine curling up right next to a fireplace with a great book, maybe an adventure story, maybe a scary story, maybe a fun story, you know, it's just humor. And ah, uh, you'd sit down, and this was a wonderful place like a nook. But right next to you was this big open room with, with a beautiful lamp and windows that you could look outside, and you could see the whole world, and the whole world shined in on you. And then you had these cute chairs that were blowing foam insulation, something that no one had ever done before. You made cushions out of it that molded to your back. So when you sat down, it felt like you were sitting on air. Ah, I'm floating. Ah. They called that the Papa Bear chair because they thought it was giving you a big bear hug. And indeed, people said it was the most comfortable chair in the world. In fact, that designer ended up making chairs for a president. So comfortable were his chairs. And these chairs in the entertainment room, Television came out in 1948. It started to be mass marketed. Everybody realized that this was going to change the world. You could, you could see things before they even begin. Oh, man. Well, let's put television as part of our furniture. So they started making these wonderful pieces of furniture just for a television. And then they started adding things. Something called Hi-Fi stands for High Fidelity. Stereo! Man, you can have sound coming out of here, you can have sound coming out of there. You electronically hooked the whole thing up. You had everything hidden in here so that everything looked stylish, nothing looked, looked cluttery. It was smooth, it was a console, and ah, you sat down, you watched cartoons on Saturday morning, you watched the Ed Sullivan show on Sunday night, you watched Bonanza, dun 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 and you were ready to head out west, and it was a whole world coming into your entertainment room which you could sit down, move the furniture any way you wanted to because it was lightweight and fun and, and made of aluminum and foam and it was an easy life. It was a wonderful life. Good morning, children. My name is Miss Emma. And in the 1950s, they didn't have any Targets, no malls, and no Amazon. So you actually had to go to the main street in the middle of the town and that's where your grandmas would buy their clothing. And this is what a store would have looked like back then. Do you see up here, we have a whole selection of 1950s and 60s clothing because the ladies were always dressed really nice. They never went anywhere without their beautiful gloves, of course their hat, and never without their pocketbook. And that's just another word for a purse.
to introduce you to a man named Harley Earl. Hello everybody, my name is Harley Earl and I'm Vice President of General Motors Corporation. Why, we were the corporation that helped fuel everyone during the war. We ended up building all the things that helped bring the peace. And now we were out of war, we were in the peace, and people wanted to enjoy themselves. And they wanted to move from place to place. So you know what they needed to do that? They needed a car. We needed to make America cars that they love. And they wanted something big, they wanted something bold, they wanted something exciting. They wanted something that would make them feel like who they were. became the largest corporation in the world selling cars. Half of the cars sold in the world in 1955 were sold by General Motors. I think Harley Earl was on to something and he did it well. So, let's go to one of the most amazing stores that started something that's still going on today. Let's go to Woolworths! Soto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Forward March! Oh, I'd love to be an Oscar Mayer wiener. That's then... what I truly love to be. But if I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. Everyone would be in love with me. A big parade is so inspiring. It was a simple commercial, but it helped them sell millions of hot dogs in their packages. Oh man, advertising, a great way that art was used in mid-century modding. So, we're going to finish up with a great show. Come over here to the Ed Sullivan Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ed Sullivan Show. And I tell you, our show, we just had just about every kind of star in the world. If you wanted to be a star, you got on the Ed Sullivan Show so everybody could see you. The magic of television. So. You heard about this guy named Elvis, didn't you? He was on my show four times. You ever hear about these four Englishmen that had these mop head hairdos? What were they called? The Beatles. Right here on our stage, we have a wonderful star named Claudia Lanier. She lives right here. Her film, 20 Feet from Stardom, won the Oscar last year for the best documentary. And what was it about? It was about the women who were the backup sound for the rock and roll stars of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And she was one of them and she sang for everybody, and it was these women that really had the rhythm of rock and roll. And so without further ado, to sing for you, let's have Claudia Lanier. Little Richard, 1954, say, Wah, ba, ba, loo, ba, ba, la, ba, bo. Explorer 1. Then we sent a man 
a live man out into the edge of space and he came down through the, through the atmosphere with a heat shield and a boom, parachute opened up, he landed in the water, safely he was, he was rescued. Wow, we can do it, we can do it. And so the American space race began with the Soviet Union. Then we sent a man around the world. Then the president of our country, John F. Kennedy, he looked at everyone on the television set and he said, I challenge Americans to put a man on the moon before the end of this decade. And sure enough, we started this incredible exploration into a world we'd never known before, the world of space. And finally, in 1969, on July 20th, two men stepped out on the moon, and their names were Neil, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. You know what Buzz's mom's name was? Moon. I think he knew he was destined for stardom. So all these wonderful things that we take for granted today came to the space because we didn't say what we couldn't do, we looked at what we could. We leaped over all the barriers that said, hey, what's stopping us? And so we did. And mid-century modern created that optimism that today is propelling the United States into the future again. Thank you all so much. You've been terrific. And we hope you'll always come back to another achievement.